Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. It's a hot summer day in Kansas, and I am in the mood for cool colors that make me feel cooler than it is outside. So hopefully the set feels fresh and cool, and I feel fresh and cool, and I'm getting ready for you know, another blast that's coming our way. So uh, this month's So Confident project is the Willow Blouse. And the kit for the month is a beautiful white cotton, 100% Egyptian cotton, that has a very slight sheen. And I hesitate to use that word sheen because it's not shiny, but there is a nice smooth finish to it that has just a little bit of a sheen to it. But uh, we're loving this shirt. It comes both in a short sleeve and a long sleeve version. It has this beautiful drape, a loop and button at the neck at the center front, and then another buttonhole and button that holds this drape in place. Nice collar with a, a good acute point on it, and a slit on the right hand side but not on the left-hand side, and the front is asymmetric, as you can see. So the video is out. You can sign up for the monthly class and watch me make this from start to finish. I have lots of great tips throughout the, the, um, the video, the workshop, um, from forming a collar to making this loop to setting in a sleeve, <clears throat> excuse me, in a woven, uh, nice narrow hem technique. So. It's a, it's a great video, and actually it turned out to be one of our longer videos. I don't really know why. It doesn't take all that long to make the garment, but for some reason the video is nice and long, about an hour and a half. So feel free to join either by the year or for the month. We've also made it, oh, and by the way, this, we only have a, just a very, very, very few of these kits left. I think it's only maybe four. So if you're wanting the white, uh, Egyptian cotton, now's the time to order it because it, they're going to be soon gone, I think. We have made it in other things. Uh, here it is in a light handkerchief linen. This is so soft and comfortable. After I wash the fabric, it's softened tremendously. And so it, when you wash handkerchief linen like this, then it does have a, a different character to it. It's not crisp, and it's very soft and drapey. Um, of course, it wrinkles. That's the whole idea of linen. You know, you have to like wrinkles or rumpledness, at least. But um, this, I, when I wear this, this is definitely summer to me. It's a beautiful uh, water kind of color and sea color and feels fresh and cool. So think about making it in a beautiful handkerchief linen or a cotton or whatever. But make it because it is really, really cool. And next week on Facebook Live, I'm going to be getting a little bit more into this particular garment and some other ways to wear it and what to make it out of. All right, well, we run into a great fabric every once in a while. And this week's primary fabric is one that I was just really taken with. Of course, as you know, I like to do some watercolor, and so the fabric had this watercolor effect to it. And so I'm wearing a fabric. It's also on the dress form as well, but it's back here on the wall. And this is a fabric that is called Lost in the Woods. It's a gradient watercolor painted fabric, although it's printed, of course. Not every yard was hand painted by any means. It is 45 inches wide, so you have a fabric that changes through the width. So the half of it is a light color. And this is, I've, I've folded this up so you can see the other side of it. And as you go across the width, it changes in coloration and gets quite deep in color with lots of beautiful colors to it. So this is the fabric that I decided to use as a kit fabric, something we would really promote. And so we have a lot of yards of it, and we're kind of ready to go to fulfill some orders for you. One of the things about this, because of the way it's printed, then this is an example of a garment that needs to be, or a fabric that needs to be cut on the cross grain. Now, it doesn't have to be. You know, you could use it like this, and you would have the, the gradation across. 
but I liked the idea of having the heavier weight fab, uh, coloration at the bottom of a garment. So the first idea was to make the San Diego tunic. And I'm pretty crazy about this, I have to say. Uh, put this with some white jeans, maybe some um, legging uh, kinds of things, uh, you know, a slim pant, helix pants, pencil pants, something like that. I think it's the wrong profile to wear a wide pant. Some people could pull that off, but not very many people, actually. But this is a, a garment that I've loved forever. Uh, and in fact, the pattern has had two renditions. It was an earlier pattern for us. We discontinued it. It was so popular. And we brought it back, added the tunic and a top to the original San Diego jacket pattern. And now we've been running with that for a while. But we are almost out of San Diego patterns. I, I can't remember exactly how many we have left, but maybe about 40, something like that. For us, that's not very many patterns. So if you don't have the San Diego pattern, now is the time to get it. It's print only. And we're, gonna, we're not going to reprint it for a while, maybe never, I don't know. But for now, it's going to be discontinued. So it's the time to get your hands on it. So this was the original rendition. But we discovered that because of the width of the fabric, it's not really possible to get the XXL size on the width because of the length of the garment. So just know that if you're interested in this fabric and you want to make the tunic, it really can't be done on the cross grain in an XXL. It can be done on the lengthwise grain, but not the crosswise grain. So just know that. So because of that, and we like to have you know, the all-inclusive sizes, then they decided to make another garment. And that's what I have on, which is the splice top. Now, to me, this is a great summer top. You know, There's air movement through this garment, and yet it's fitted through the, the neck and the shoulders. And it has the right length sleeve for me. You know, I don't look that great anymore in sleeveless, unfortunately. Uh, so I like a, a little bit of a sleeve. Of course, it can be made shorter can be made longer, but this is the length of the sleeve in the pattern. It has a nice sort of boat-shaped neckline to it, and I just think this is a really flattering garment on a lot of people. It doesn't have a bust dart, but it would be easy to make a full bust adjustment on this, either with or without a dart, so feel free to do that. The sleeve is set in, so not a, not a flat set sleeve, so it's an easy thing to manipulate in terms of adding uh, bust fullness. Now, we call it the splice because it has splices or insertions on the side. And these little splices are a little bit shorter than the front and the back. I've often thought that this would be really fun to have a longer, longer back and a shorter front. Um, or splices could be longer than the front and the back. You could play with this a little bit. Of course, it can be made in the same fabric, but I like the idea of accenting it with a little bit of color. So I've added these splice options. And this is a fabric that probably doesn't read super well on Facebook Live, but there is a little bit of texture to this fabric, printed texture. It is a nice smooth cotton, but there's an impression on it of some random dots. It's, it's like you took some sand and you put color on the sand and you sprinkled the sand and, and you pressed it down and it left a little bit of sand texture to it. So we have this beautiful blueberry. All of these colors just go with it. There are six colors. The blueberry, the lime green, which is what I have, of course, and aqua blue, a beautiful uh, deep red tone, a coral, and what do we call this color? We call this color bubblegum. Perfect. That sounds like a Bessie name to me. She names the fabrics <laughs> and the colors. But if you want a kit of this splice, you can have it. But you, and there are options, pull down options on the website of choosing whatever splice color you want. So you can customize it in that way. Every garment is probably going to look different depending on where you place it. You can have more of the more solid color not solid exactly, but the less printed, or you can have less. It just is going to depend on where you place the pattern and which one you make. So this is the feature fabric for this week, this uh, Lost in the Woods <clears throat> fabric. 
for the Splice and the San Diego. Now the Splice is a kit that includes one of the options of the solids. The San Diego you can make, we're also giving you the option of just ordering this by the yard. So if you want to make the San Diego or any other garment, you could make a willow out of it, a lot of things. Uh, you can also just order the yardage. With the kit, you do get thread and your choice of a splice color. So let's talk about the San Diego a little bit uh, more. One of the things that has been its primary feature all this time is this very interesting intersection of a shoulder seam, which is forward. <clears throat> Normally the shoulder would be right here. This is dropped forward almost an inch and a half. And then there's this turn right here that goes into the next seam, and so that forms the collar. Now we have a really good blog on this. So if you go to our website and click on blog and then go to the right hand column and click on San Diego, this will come up as San Diego neckline tips and it gives you the how to of this neckline. But I just want to point out a couple of things. This particular detail shows up on a few of our patterns. Some of our older ones and a couple of them that still exist in the line as well. So because this is so important to get correctly, then just I'm going to emphasize it one more time. This is a little sample, if I can figure out where I am here on this. Yes. You have to look at the instructions because it's a little bit counterintuitive how you put these pieces together. But this is, for example, the left-hand side piece. This will get turned back and form the collar. So this, which is part of a big V, this is the shoulder seam. And there's a really, really, really important dot right here. And you look at that dot and you say, well, I wonder what that's for. It seems sort of in, in nowhere land, you know, it's not, um, it's very far from the actual V of the cut. So if you draw a line at 5 eighths of an inch across the shoulder seam and then draw another line with chalk 5 eighths of an inch from this edge, which becomes the neck edge that will turn, and you bring those two lines together, that should join at the dot. And then the only way to make this work is to trim or clip that V to the point. And you have to be really bold about it. You have to get really in there. Or otherwise, this will not fit. But it's the clipping that allows this shoulder seam to actually turn and go around to the back. And you can see that it's not going to do it right now until that is clipped. So that's San Diego. It has a little bit of top stitching right in here and that's what holds this together. So there's complete coverage through this area. You can wear the collar fully open and splayed like this, which I like. Or you can drape it a little bit if you like. You could probably even close it up a little bit more if you like that look. You could put a little button there if you wanted to and form more of a short collar. So there's lots of ways to do this. This sleeve is set in flat, so that's pretty easy. As I recall, the sleeve is set in and then the side seam and the sleeve seam are all sewn as one. I like the nice, nice deep hem that we have on the sleeve. That's a little more of, an, of a couture look. You know, it's not a, a, a narrow hem at all. Simple back. This has been made into a dress. It can be, of course, used as a top, which is also in the pattern, and that is a, 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 a hemline that's straight and no longer has this pleated asymmetric angle to it. So that's the San Diego. And you can see that this is the width of the fabric. So this was the lighter portion cut on the cross grain, and so the deeper colors are at the bottom of the piece, which I feel like is a balance of weight 
of color and uh, degree of intensity of the pattern. So let's talk a little bit about the splice. Now the splice has a set-in sleeve, has a facing. We don't have very many facings, I realize, in our, or at least neck facings in our line for some reason, but this, because of the shape of the neck, rather than binding it, although you could do that, it's really easier to do with this facing. This is a very easy garment to construct. It goes together really fast, and I'm all over that in the summertime, it seems. So, but I want to talk to you a little bit about setting in a sleeve. So let's, I have a new fancy table. Look at this. All right. So, my poor sample here has had a few times of using it, so it's a little bit limp, I'm seeing, <clears throat> and I'm missing a few stitches. But, of course, you always want to run a single line of basting stitches between the notches over the cap of a sleeve. And I do that right on the seam line. A lot of people run that stitch line a little bit into the seam allowance, but I want that to be my guideline for stitching it when I'm actually stitching it into the garment. So once I've done that, and I do try to keep track of whatever the bobbin thread is, because that's generally the looser thread. So I'm gonna give that a little bit of an ease. You can see I'm missing a few stitches here in my sample. I should have fixed that. But let's just ease that a little bit. And then I put that on my tailor's ham. And I would steam this. I'm not going to do that here, although I guess I could have now that I think about it. We do have electricity in Kansas. Um, so you steam this and you f begin to form this with your hand and you're not really pressing it you're steaming it you're trying to get rid of a little bit of this excess ruffling of the seam allowance and you're melding the actual stitches and you're making sure there are no puckers at this point so that's giving that sleeve that extra little nice hang to it so it's coming out of the seam allowance and then dropping. So then when you are pinning this into the garment, I start by pinning the side seam. And then I go to the top and match that. Pin there. I pin at my notches, double notch for the back. If they don't match, you know you've got the wrong sleeve in. I've done that a million times. A single notch. So I have my four pins in, and we know that <clears throat> most of the ease, if not all of the ease, is going to happen. I must not have this match at the top. There it is. Lost my tailor tack there for a minute. Okay. I realize now what's going on here. I'm actually working on a Liberty and the seams do not match. That is what's going on. Well, that, don't pay any attention to this because I'm talking about the splice and I'm demonstrating on a Liberty. But, okay. So what I really want to show you is how I build in that ease in the pinning process. So you can see that the sleeve is bigger than the actual circumference of the arm's eye. So I start at the top and I roll that over my finger. And I pin so that I'm straddling that line. 
come down about another five eighths to three quarters of an inch. That is building in the ease. That's where I'm missing a little thread. I think it's time for a new sample. What do you think? All right, that's going to go in there. Now this one looks like it's even going to be harder. So let's see what we've got here. By working on this side, of course, I know that I'm not going to have any puckers because I would see them if they were there. But you always start at the top and come down the side. All right, I can tell that that is going to go in there beautifully. No puckers. Everything's eased in perfectly. So now I'm going to sew this on the sleeve side so that I can follow my previous basting line. And that's how you know there are not going to be any puckers. So just a little quick tip on setting in a sleeve. All right. Any questions so far? We do. OK. Um, they want to know, how heavy is the watercolor fabric? I would say the watercolor fabric is pretty standard quilt fabric weight, if that tells you anything. Okay. It's a lightweight cotton, but it's not, um, it's not thin, it's not transparent, it's, it's opaque, you can't see through it. Is it similar to the Whistles panel fabric that we used in the kit yes, it is. last year? It's very much the same same weight as that. Yes, that's a good comparison. Which side up when sewing in the sleeve? The side, you sew in the sleeve side, so you sew in the round. You want to sew on the side where you can see the previous basting line, which would have been on the seam line. Is a walking foot helpful in sewing a set-in sleeve? Yes, a walking foot is always helpful. I have my even feed feature set on my sewing machine 100% of the time. And if I need a little extra help with that, I will put on a separate attachment, the walking foot. Um, it does help, but if you've done your job in steaming and forming and easing, pre-easing over the ham with some steam, and if you've built it uh, over your finger, you shouldn't have as much trouble as maybe you've been used to in the past. Where did you get your motorized table? Oh, this motorized table came from Knoll International. Um, how did you launder the watercolor fabric? A standard washing machine, um, laundry, dried it. it. It was fine. What's the yardage requirement for a crosswise layout? Two and a half yards of 45 inches. And that is with the sleeve for the larger sizes. Um, they do have to make note that they do have to turn that sleeve. And put that on the lengthwise grain? Well, turn it so the, so the layout, so the print is going the same direction that you're showing it in the garment. So the sleeves of the, of which sizes, the extra large and the XXL? Right. Have to be turned. Have, so it would look exactly like your garment. Okay. Right. So the lighter portion. The lighter is at the, at the bottom. So that's been a little yes. bit reversed from the cutting out of the main pieces. Right. The, yes, the sleeves have been reversed. Right. That's, isn't that just a choice for most, though? They could have the, the light up here if they wanted on, on most sizes. Right, it's just the larger sizes. Just the larger sizes have to be cut like this. Mm -hmm. Which I like. I like yeah. that look. I like the way it turned out, mm -hmm. actually. Do you ship patterns to, t to Canada? We ship patterns to Canada all the time. Yeah, it does take a little bit longer sometimes, 
but uh, definitely ship to Canada. We ship all over the world, actually. Um, is this fabric a woven, and do you need to go up a size for the splice? This fabric is a woven, and you do not n need to go up a size. As a matter of fact, some people can probably wear a size smaller. I don't, but some do. I'm wearing a small, and that would be the size I would make in any fabric. I can get an extra small on. I can also wear a medium. Um, how would you handle a forward thrust shoulder adjustment with the San Diego? With the San Diego? Um, well, first of all, you probably wouldn't need it because this is not set at the shoulder. But if you want it, it's the same way. If you want a forward thrust, you would keep this point right here and you would determine how much drop you want and you would draw a new line and cut away that on the front and add that little wedge to the back. So it's the same process, just remembering that you're working from that, that dot along that shoulder seam that I pointed out earlier. But I think that's something you need to evaluate because you may not need it on this garment. It's so dropped or so forward. Is the San Diego collar the same technique as in the, bar the Charlie Bomber? Yes, this is the same technique as the Charlie Bomber. It's the same technique, Charlie Bomber, um, Zona jacket, Soho coat, which we don't have in the line anymore, but some people are still making it. Um, I feel like it shows up someplace else too. Um, not Chicago. No, I, maybe that's it now. We used to have a lot more patterns with this detail. Yeah, did you say the Tremont? What? Did you say the Tremont? Tremont. Okay. That's another one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, will the extra extra large work in the San Diego if shortened a few inches? Yes. I don't know how many inches shortened, but probably, mm -hmm. do you know, Erin? Two or three, maybe? I'd have to look. The, the big thing is the shoulder and the neck part of the pattern is what makes it so long. So right. that's, and then the back is really long too. So yeah. So I would think shortened, it would be fine though. Mm -hmm. We would just have to see how much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have a yardage for the crosswise cutout for the San Diego tunic? Two and a half yard. Oh, the San Diego tunic. Yeah. Uh, it's a standard yardage. It was two and a, we decided it was two and a half on this as well. Right? For the San Diego tunic? Yes. On the crosswise? That's what I thought. No? No, it, it can't. I, I would have to answer that question later, okay. I guess. I wasn't prepared for the San Diego <laughs> tunic this morning. <laughs> Just got back in town and I was like, oh. Yeah, okay. We're Aaron's been on vacation. <laughs> We're doing so, the San Diego. Okay. Uh, we can um, generally a layout on the cross grain takes less yardage than the original yardage. But that may not be the case in this fabric. Mm -hmm. So we'll get, we'll, uh, we'll post that. Where is this wonderful fabric from? Uh, it's from Japan, actually. I meant to say that. Um, made in Japan. That, everything from Japan, in my opinion, is like superior to anything we get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I love Japanese fabrics. Can you repeat how to cut the larger sizes for the splice? How to cut the larger sizes for the splice? Well, all the sizes on the splice are cut on the cross grain. And the sleeve is also, is instead of the sleeve, let's say this is the top of the splice, and you're coming this way. In this case, your sleeve would go this way, where the head of the sleeve is over here, and the bottom of the sleeve is over here. So the sleeves are flipped. Mm -hmm. And then you can cut the splices on the cross grain as well. So you only need a quarter of a yard of fabric. Do we need to make the shoulder neckline seem a little smaller to hide bra straps? Um, mine, I ha did not feel the need to do that. Um, that's probably a personal mm -hmm. choice, but 
my bra straps are quite a ways from this opening. I feel like in certain boat necks they're really wide. Yeah. But the splice, I wouldn't say, is I wouldn't is wide. think so. I mean, you could change the shape of the neckline and do a traditional round neckline and do a keyhole opening in the back if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. have you to could adjust. scoop it out more. Some people think that this is a little bit too high across here. This can be shaped a little bit and cut, cut down a bit. And then adjust the facings. And adjust the facing. Mm -hmm. Is there a photo on the website for this San Diego made into a dress? I can't answer that. Uh, Samantha is the one who made this into a dress. We'd have to see if that's on the website or not. Uh, we can probably find that picture, if not, and put it there. Betsy's pretty good at finding pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have any in-person classes planned? Any what kind of classes? In-person classes. The next so Kansas is in August, and we don't have any in-person classes scheduled after that yet. None, no more in 2022, I know that. We don't know about 2023 yet. We're still putting the sort of bigger events together first. Um, can they see how high up the insert comes on the side? It comes clear up to the, the, the underarm. So it's part of the circumference of the sleeve. Does the cross grain hang differently than straight grain? Not in this fabric. Uh, that's one thing about this cotton. When you hold it up one direction and then you s flip it to the cross grain, you can't tell any difference in the hang. Can you hold the watercolor fabric so we can see how it fully looks? See how it what now? How it fully looks. So I wonder, if can you reach it to, to pull it down? Well, let me undo it here. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's you're pretty much seeing it mm -hmm. right here. There we go. You can see the, the tunic used is pretty much the whole, mm -hmm. the width, and then Linda's yeah. holding up the fabric. Yeah. So here's the other half. Which I think works vertically as well. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it reads a little more uh, like a, a garden scene if it's on the cross grain. Mm -hmm. But it's more abstract, like this. And what pants do you have on? I, well, I have on for the tenth week in a row <laughs> my um, dusty pink Hudson pants. <laughs> I've never seen any fabric like this. You know, last year and uh, every year in my life I've worn white pants all summer. And for some reason these pale pink pants go with everything. It's my new white, I guess. You know, there's always the new black. Well, this is the new white for me. <laughs> But, speaking of pants, I did pull out some pretty fabrics. Is this in your way? No. Okay. Um, keeping in the uh, realm of cool colors and fabric, I thought these were some beautiful fabrics to use for pants that go with the, the, um, the print. So this, this gorgeous lavender, beautiful drapey linen. This is already softened. So it's very, very drapey. For linen, that's super drapey. And as I say that, I think this is viscose linen. So this is the same fabric that I have on in the dusty pink. Here is a soft blue-gray linen. The aqua, very, very pale. This is a cross-dyed linen that has the green and blue in it. More of a um, cantaloupe color and then another lavender that's also a cross dyed with white. So I think all of these are just beautiful with this fabric. 
You can just about wear any color you like. You could pull out yellow if you want, deeper colors as well, but I was, wanted to keep in the, in the line of, of summer, beautiful light pastels. Okay, they wanted to see close-ups of the cotton. Okay, uh, uh, because of the texture? Right, just yeah, that let faint. me pull one down. This one, I think, shows off texture. about as well as any okay. of them. Thank you. So this has a little deeper blue and a, a gold dot to it. Yeah, that, that shows it off really well. Yeah. Um, they're, they're pretty subtle, I have to say, but they're, it's, they're all the same. So it's just a difference in uh, color that they've used. Okay, I don't think there's any other questions, but let me double check. Okay. Does this fabric have a repeat? The you know, it probably does. Um, honestly, well, I'm seeing a repeat here. It's a huge repeat, actually, from here to here. I would say the repeat is a good yard. But I don't think you have to worry about that with the way this is being used and cut out. I wouldn't try to match anything. If anything, you want to maybe, as, as we've done here, you know, match the the concentration of color and so but not every motif has been matched but the general flow of the concentration of color has been continued around the garment do you have any spaces left in so kansas no spaces in so kansas <laughs> <laughs> sorry and a long waiting list i do believe yeah <laughs> Um, would this work for the Hugo top? Oh, I'd make a great Hugo. I toyed with the idea of making the Hugo, actually. But I wanted to put these spice colors in there. I just loved that idea. But yeah, Hugo would be great. Yeah, I, I mean, it could make um, a lot of our shirts. The, uh, the Madrid shirt, short, would be really, with a short sleeve would be fun. The uh, Hugo, the cottage shirt would be fantastic. Um, the uh, bells or whistles, either one. Um, what other shirts do we have? The Zona. You know, I don't talk about the Zona very much. I probably will talk about that in the future, but that make it make a great Zona because of its seeming detail. So, yeah, Hugo would be great. And can you turn around so they can see the back? Okay. Pull back a little bit. I think the back pretty much looks like the front. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Looks nice. And then there's another person who says, how do we get on the waiting list for Sew Kansas? And just email one of us, basically, to get on the waiting list for Sew Kansas. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. What are our specials? Okay. Specials. <laughs> so uh, you can order the kit, and I think this is a really good price. With the discount, the 15% discount on the kit, I think it's like $49.30, which I think is really a bargain for a kit that has this plus whatever fabric you want for your splices and thread and, of course, the packaging. Uh, or, and the yardage is also on sale. And all of these linens are on sale. There are six of those. Those are on sale as well. And then we have um, a standalone PDF tutorial called Anatomy of a Sleeve, and that talks about the building of a sleeve and how to set in the sleeve. It goes, it goes in, of course, to much more detail than what I just briefly showed you here. And then uh, we reached back to our Series 1, So Confident, and that has 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 tutorials in it, which is amazing. And three of those are all about fitting fitting the shoulders, anatomy of a sleeve, and fitting the bust, and then there are nine more PDF tutorials. Now, series one was PDF, not video, make that clear, and we're selling that for half price, which is a, a fantastic bargain, $49 instead of $99 for 12 tutorials. So, big sale week. There is one more question. Um, does the kit have the pattern? The kit does not have the pattern. We always sell the pattern separately. The splice is a download, and the San Diego is a print pattern. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Well, I hope you have a, a great week. 
Enjoy your summer as it's going on and getting over with, and we'll see you in another week.